Hey guys, welcome along. Thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button down there and the notifications and whatever. Um, what is it now? It's Thursday midnight, so it's nearly Friday morning. Um, done a couple of reviews for you this week and I'm about to do another one. Uh, started off on Tuesday with a review of this. This was my um, part of my uh, big Black Friday buy from, uh, from eModels. So that came on Tuesday. Did a very quick inbox review of that one, um, and you will see more detail of this kit, I can assure you. Then on Wednesday, I did you an inbox review very quickly of this one, which is the Hobby Boss 172nd scale kit of the same, the, the, the big door of the staff gun. What we're doing now is this one. Yeah, if you remember in the video on Wednesday, I said I'd love to build this. Um, I would love to build it if only I had the time. I bought this kit in 2014. It's the 135th scale Soul Art um, Dora. Uh, I saw it on eBay. It was very badly described. I just happened to come across it. And for any of you out there that want to get this kit and are finding it hard to come by or trying to scratch the pennies up, turn off now because I'm going to show you what I paid for it. This is the invoice, and you can see I bought it on what was it Saturday, the eighteenth of January two thousand and fourteen, and it came to me. There it is. You can see World War Two German Railway Gun Dora Gustav um, model kit. Yep, one thirty fifth scale, and that was what I paid for it. One hundred and seventy pounds plus thirty pounds postage. I couldn't believe it. It was described as a Doran or something. It was it was misspelt, and um, I bid two hundred quid, and I thought I'll just give it a go, you know. And I won it. It stayed at one hundred and seventy pound, and no one else bid on it. Um, and as I said, if you want to buy this kit and you're struggling to get it, and now you're getting really jealous, just to really rub salt into the wounds, it came with this. This was in the box. This is the um, what are they? The booby decals, Nordland models. Um, decal kit for the gun because the the actual kit itself comes with no decals and if you know this gun you'll know that you know all around the um, all around the undercarriage whatever rail cars and that it's plastered in uh, decals explaining what it all is it tells the the people that built it where it all went so um, yeah if you don't know much about this gun then um, look it up on YouTube it was basically transported to the point of firing by many many rail cars and assembled on site. It took thousands of men to do it, and um, yeah, quite an quite an interesting um, subject, really. So yeah, I bought this four years ago, and well, nearly five years ago now, and um, never built it. In fact, I have just literally finished. I got it out, and I've just literally finished washing all the sprues. Um, I originally got it. Somebody had owned it before and gone through all the sprues and checked all the uh, parts out. I then went and did the same. So when I got it, all the boxes were open, but the bags were sealed. I did the same. Everything was there. And then noticed it was very, very oily. This kit is one of the older ones. It's actually the black ABS. It's not the uh, modern grey plastic. So, um, yeah, uh, really, really chuffed with that buy. Uh, whether I'll ever build it or not, I don't know. Um, but what I'm going to do is give you a very quick inbox, sort of just show you the box and what's in the box and how it's packaged and everything. Uh, just like I did with the other two because I'm actually going to put together another video on these models for you And I'll tell you about more of that that at the end of this video So let me cut off here I'll get you to the box and then we'll come back to the bench and I'll show you the instructions and what the kit's all about Okay, so here she is. This is the box just to give you an idea of the size of it There's my foot. So I'm a size 9. I haven't got titchy feet. There it is. It's um, it's huge so uh, yeah, let's let's uh, get this box open. As you can see, it's out on the landing because it's so bloody big. Um, if you look on the large scale modeler forums, you will see on there that somebody reviewed this kit with some pictures back in 2014. That was me. And there's a picture of this on the landing, same landing with a bottle of Tamiya paint next to it. So yeah, you can see this thing is, um, it's absolutely huge. I mean, I'll put my foot in the shot again, there you can see just how absolutely massive it is. And it comes really unusually packaged. Uh, you can see here, there's, there's six boxes. So if we pick on this one here, you can see carton number six. And you've got a list of all the, 
all the boxes down here and you can see I've got a red cross by some of them on all of them and that basically is what I use to show me that they're present and then I've got a black spot next to them here and that shows me that I've actually washed those parts so they've all been done now um, and every single bag is labelled like this it tells you which box it came from what parts you've got and it's box number it's bag number one out of 21 bags in that box so quite cleverly done but it's almost like um you know if you buy a, a a cheap piece of furniture from argos or something that's made in china this is how it comes in in a box and all labeled like what's in there and everything but you can see the parts are all bagged up separately you can see the you know they they come like this all bagged up with the label on the box and on the bag and everything um fitting it back in is a complete and utter nightmare trying to get it all squeezed in um it's, it's, it's crazy there's nothing here i can actually show you that you'll recognize as part of the kit but just see it's all um it's all just bagged up actually what i can show you is this is one of the bridges to give you an idea this is one of the parts that goes between the two rail cars um put that down there put my hand next to it you can see how big that is um it's huge the kit has got issues it's got quite a lot of issues actually if you're after accuracy um there's parts that are wrongly made parts missing and, and all sorts but i'm going to go through all that in another video so there she is in the box now let's get back to the bench and have a look through the instructions in fact no let's just show you the side of the box you can see here there's the kit assembled and everything and there's some there's some shots there I say it's midnight so the light's not fantastic and the usual health and safety warnings and everything so yeah let's get back to the bench and we'll go through the instructions and I'll show you what it's all about right so here we are with the uh, back at the bench with the instructions it's a lovely hardback manual well not hardback but it's, it's card backed it's um it's built to last uh biggest gun of all times now available in kit 4 135th scale over 3,000 parts don't be misled by this um there are over 3,000 parts, but I'll tell you more about that in a minute. Uh, so we open up and we go into nothing, and then we get to some history about the gun. And there's um, Hitler there having a look at it and uh, admiring his, um, his millions of uh, whatever it was he spent. What was it called? Marks. His millions of marks, I expect it was, to build 1,344 tonnes. The barrel alone weighed 400 tonnes, um, 43 metres overall, overall length. And each shell weighed 7,100 kilos. So, uh, yeah, it was an incredible thing. It was some um, awful thing. Awful. Um, lots of claims about this thing. Some say they were two built. Some say they were one built. Some say they were parts of other ones found. I, I don't know. Um, I tend to gloss over it all and just uh, enjoy the pictures for what they are, really, and um, kind of wish it never happened, really. But... Um, it's such an amazing feat of engineering, you know, even though it killed thousands of people, it's just, it's just amazing. And you think about it so many years ago and this was all designed and, you know, put together miles away from where it was built and just, yeah, it's just incredible. So we've got a lot of historic photos here, um, which are uh, very good, very, very period, more here. And, um, yeah, some some very good close-up shots of it being built and the trains that manoeuvred it around and uh yeah some of the guys putting it together here we can see as i say i think it was like 2500 people or something to to, to build it run it dig the trend uh, the um the valleys out of the uh, out of the hillside and um and lay the track and everything so right straight into sprue shots um very simply numbered um, and as you can see, <laughs> I've never seen anything like this in a kit before. B1 to 23, that means this sprue is B1, part 1, to B23, and there's 20 of them. C1 times 3, there's, there's more than 3. And then there's C2, uh, they're calling that C2, it says times 4, there's actually 29 of these. So we've got sprue, sprue D times 4, and then we've got the... Uh, those bridges bits I showed you, track parts, aluminium track rails, some railings down here, the actual breech for the gun, that's actually about this long, it's huge. Um, there's the back of the breech, trail joiners, 
Um, then we're moving on to that actually main frame of the thing. The barrel is in four pieces. Uh, more of the gun raising mechanism. Actual shells down here. Um, the uh, charge that went behind the shell. More railings. Lots of more pieces of the superstructure. There's actually a, a big generator house that goes on the back. Or not generator house, a diesel engine house. I think it was for controlling the winches. Um, you get no engine detail, but all the doors open. So you could make an engine. I've actually got a spare engine from a, a 24th scale London bus. So I may use that as a basis if I ever build this and put that in there. So uh, yeah, we've got more rails, railings, walkways, more railings, more walkways, <laughs> supports for the rear. Um, more parts here. As I say, this is ABS, this kit, and it's extremely strong. It's very, very rigid. You could probably build this and bloody park it in the garden. So you can see here, I've worked out all the parts. There's 3,315 parts. There's only two of these per rail car, I think. And I think there's only two of those. So there's a lot of parts you get left over, which is dead handy, because a lot of this in those bags gets broken. Quite a few of these in my kit were broken. Uh, they snap off there. So well, you can see you've got four there on two sprues well so there's 29 of these and i think there's about 15 of those so yeah it's um in fact no there's not 15 of those there are three of those and 29 of those so yeah that there are there's a lot of stuff you don't use um there's 20 of these and there's 20 axles so you're going to use all the axles there's a lot of these are hand wheels or spare um so yeah so the 3315 parts yeah but you're not using them all and here we go, we're into the, but very much like the trumpeter kits, um, into making the, the front brake mechanism, the front brake, the brake mechanism for the rail cars. Eight of those, eight of those. And then you're actually putting the rail cars together. And then you've got screws to screw the base in to keep it all nice and strong. Air tanks here. And then we're doing up the uh, bulkheads at the end with the, um, with the uh, buffers on them. Some bits and pieces of the uh, towing mechanism. There's a box there some gearbox or something and then you've got all this the the, the latches and everything that are all um they could all be made to move you don't have to fix them solid and then we've got some steps here which are multi-part going on the side piece of photo etch going on the top railings steps more about that later more about the railings later then we've got the uh, the brake there um adding more parts more gears and god knows what to it um and then we're putting those bridges on to, to get the two um, the rail cars together. And then you've got the actual gun mount itself. And there, putting more rails on the side of that. And then we're building up the actual main frame. And uh, again, more railings. Adding the gun mount to the main frame. Getting the uh, parts together. You've got parts for the hydraulic rams and everything. More on that later. There's some little fingers down here for something or other. Then we're on to the gun breech. You've got the, the actual um, breech there. And then you've got the, the sliding part here that goes in and out. Um, part of the gun mount. And then we've got a spring here to keep tension on it so you can position the gun. This is like a tuft affair here, so it kind of ratchets up and down. Um, then actually assembling the gun barrel. More on that later. Uh, I think... Does it or doesn't it have a workable breech? I can't remember now. Um, or workable recoil, should I say. Then we're into the framework. If you don't know this very well, um, this actual thing was, as I say, was built on site. The actual, these parts here, they actually went as, um, as this with the rail cars at each end on a single track. And then they were put onto a double track next to each other and brought together with these clamps holding it all together. Uh, you'll see all that at the end anyway. Um, and then we've got the framework going on for the uh, the rear loading area. We've got a trolley for um, for the loaders, loading the charge. And then we've got the uh, the chute that the actual shell goes on. We've got two of the shells to build up, more railings. We've got eye bolts going into this um, centre frame section. You can see here there's those parts. I'll tell you where these go in. They bolt them together and then you've got these supports that actually hold it all together. Uh, for some reason, I've written a note there, do not glue. Um, this is the house I was telling you about where the engine goes inside. You can see all the doors are removable. And then this is, I believe, the exhaust system, which is very simplified and needs uh, needs modification. 
then we've got we're putting the actual onto the rail cars adding the um the engine house up underneath there and then bolting all that together onto the back and then we've got the uh, actual lift mechanism with the winches and everything on the back this is um incorrect there should be four cables on there and it's just got using the ones so that needs some uh, some extra work probably have to remake that with pulleys and everything uh, then we've got the ladders going up the back. You've got these um, steps here. I think they tell you this is incorrect. I think they're supposed to be facing inwards. Um, then there's your, your little trolley for loading the shell on, getting it up on the back, adding some ladders. Um, and then building up the, the uh, train track and everything. I think you probably do that first, put that on a shelf, and then you'd have somewhere to store the, the massive parts as you build it. And then here you can see here's the assembled model um, all up and ready to go. On its, uh, on its base and everything with that massive gun sticking out the front apparently this model when built is over seven foot long and there we are back into nothingness and then we've got that picture of uh, Hitler admiring his um, his massive weapon at the end so there we go guys um, that was your very very quick review of this uh, huge I think it's probably the biggest model kit in the world isn't it made by uh, Sorart as I say this one is made from black ABS the older ones were the newer ones, I think, are made from a grey styrene, so they're a lot easier to assemble, but the parts won't be, the, the plastic itself won't be as strong. So I would imagine with their packaging, they just stuff it all in a bag and stuff it into boxes. I would imagine the kits come with even more damage on them now, or, or bent twisted railings or something. So Right guys, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, I certainly enjoyed putting it, put it together. Uh, I said I'd come back at the end of the video for a quick word. What I'm doing now, I'm putting a lot of time actually into putting together a video all about corrections for these three models. The 144th from Sorart, the 72nd scale from Hobby Boss and the 35th scale you've just seen from Sorart. Um, they've all got errors. They're visual errors. I'm not going to start rivet counting about barrel size or the size of the wheels or anything um but there are some areas er, areas errors that in my mind detract from the overall look of the model and take away from its overall appearance because it's not accurate um and i'm talking about stuff you would see from six feet away so um with no further ado we'll call that a day and i'll be back very shortly with i've got to do the I've still got to edit the um, the finished video for the ambulance. I've got to finish the Lanchester armoured car. Remember, I've got a, a buddy build coming with that A7V main kit, the World War One German tank. That's going to be a beautiful model when it's built. Not blow my own trumpet. The kit is beautiful. A beginner could build it and make a beautiful model out of it. It is that nice. Um, so, yeah, I'll be... In the meantime, putting together this video, which will be probably filmed in lots and lots of little segments. And the plan is to pick on certain areas of all three kits the same. So like the barrel on all three kits. And then what I'll do is in the comments down below, my intention is to sort of write, right. If you're interested in the barrel, go to two minutes, 15. If you're interested in blah, 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 go to three minutes, 30. If you're interested in this, go to five minutes, 50. If you're not interested, switch it off. So, um... Yeah, it'll be an interesting video, I think. It won't be rivet counting. It'll be, these are the errors. These are how you correct them. Or if you just want to leave them as it is, then leave it as it is. It is a beautiful model. All three of them are lovely. But um, they have got some errors. And some of them are pretty major. And when I point them out, I think you'll be quite surprised. So anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, if you've liked this, please like, subscribe, hit that notifications bell. And you'll see a lot more of this sort of stuff coming up. So uh, it's good night from me and I'll see you all soon. Bye bye.